other side is done, 400 than 600. And man, you can really tell the difference. I'm not an SPI salesman, but you can you can tell the difference in this 2K primer versus that U-pole. That U-pole that was under the hood in trunk. 400 grit wouldn't touch it. So right now it's 400 on a little mini dirt block. I cut, it's basically, it's only this big. And uh, you can see how it knocks the guy coat off. Like nothing, man. It's falling off. So what are we doing here? We, you're, uh... Uh, we're prepping for the uh, side stripe. So I, opted, I decided to go ahead and two-tone the car. And uh, I got the paint this morning. Bobby brought the paint. He's my, my little courier. And uh, so two-tone the side. I want to do that, like I said previously. Uh, I might do it today. I don't know. It really depends on temperature, man. That's, that's all it depends on is temperature. If it doesn't get too hot, and I can keep that little room at, at like high 80s, then, then I'm gonna go ahead and do it today. If not, I'm gonna do it early tomorrow morning. Right now it's feeling like lower, I mean, yeah. it's in the lower 80s, but I think it's cooler than that. I don't think it's reading correctly. Yeah, the thing is, man, like these, you know, on a cloudy day, it, it really helps. The AC can keep up on a cloudy day, but like when that sun is just relentlessly beaming, there's not a cloud in the sky, it can't keep up. But uh, just 400 real quick. And then I, I got some 600 in the bucket just to go over it again. Which uh, the color is a solid color. It's not a metallic. So 400 is probably good. Actually, probably 320 if you wanted to, but it's, the base is Wanda. It's not less than all. So it's a little, it's kind of, it's their lower, I wouldn't say lower end, it's their, it's the, I guess it's the cheapest one they offer. Uh, they have, you got, you got uh, Wanda, uh, Less Than All, and then, and then Sickens, I guess. Um, I got a quart. The quart was $96. <laughs> And it mixes two to one. So you get, you don't actually get a half a gallon. Like like DBC, PPG, it mixes one to one. Other base coats mix one to one. A quart will get you half a gallon. But, I mean, personally, I think PPG has, has priced out the hobbyists. Like, I mean, and maybe some people can afford it, but I, I'm not paying like $1,200 for a gallon of paint. So. Not happening. 1200 Or more. Some colors are more, man. Like, it's crazy. So, you know, I mean, I think they're they're geared towards, like I say, they're not they're not geared towards hobbyists anymore, man. They're geared towards collision shops that are gonna charge the insurance. You see yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So their biggest customer is insurance, not Joe Blow, who's going to go down there on Saturday morning and, and buy buy three, you know, two quarts of paint. That are the uh, restoration shops that yep. are probably going to charge you three times right. what it's worth. Yeah. So how much was Bobby's? I remember a while yeah, back I we had Bobby. got a quart, and I want to say the quart was like like double, like two hundred. Right. So that's a gallon is eight hundred, or you know, almost nine hundred dollars a gallon, man. I got my, I got the lesson all. I got two gallons of it, uh, and it was, it was nine hundred dollars for two gallons. So it's four hundred something. Well, it's like four hundred gallon, and then their reducer is like, you know, seventy five dollars a gallon or something like that. So you know, like people complain about the price of gas, like, oh man, gas is three fifty a gallon. You know, you know, milk is too. Shit, man, a gallon of paint is. $500. <laughs> yeah, but you need milk to survive, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that might not be the best comparison, but it's just outrageous, man, what the, what the paint costs. Man. And, you know, like, I've learned that you really don't want to skimp out on the base coat, man. Mm -hmm. Well, on a solid color, maybe. 
but um, the metallics, no, no, because they're 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 gonna they're not gonna spray good. You might have stripes or modeling. It's just harder to spray. It could be the technique also, but that's what I've learned is uh, switch sides. It could be the gun too. It could be the gun. It could be the technique. There's a lot of factors, man. But it, it could also be the quality of the paint. And the, and then the solid colors, you know, they take. They might take more more coats to uh, to cover, so that's more work. Pinhole right there. Man, so this was pretty quick. I mean, you didn't really go into it too far in. I mean, it wasn't too. Nah, man, it's sanding really easy. Dude. Like that's the. I believe when I sprayed this primer, I did it early in the morning. It was like 80 degrees. And it, you know, the smoother that it lays out, the easier it's in. It's like, however good you do, one step determines how easy or how difficult the next step is going to be. If you, it's like, uh, like spreading filler, okay? I'm not good at it. I do it. But, uh, you know, most of it ends up on the ground. If you're better at spreading the filler, then you're not going to have to sand as much. You see what I mean? If you don't have to sand as much, you use less sandpaper. Mm -hmm. You save money. Um, when you spray the primer, you can get it to, to lay down nice and, and silky. You know, that makes sanding easier. So... Each step, you know, leads to the next one. That's just, so it's like, uh, it's like, you know, like uh, welding in a patch pan. The better you do it, the less you warp the metal, the less body work you got to do. The less body work you got to do, the less filler you got to use, the more money you save. It's, it all leads up to the next step. So what but, do you think, man? You think you're going to have color on this? Uh, by the end of the day or tomorrow? Uh, or? On the side track? Yeah, on the side track. I think we're going to spend more time masking than anything. Um, masking the dash mainly. It went, I don't want to overspray on the dash, even though, you know, it would just be a little bit. You really got to mask that good. Um, that's, that's, that's really the biggest factor is masking the dash and everything else, but really the dash. Oh well, yeah, because everything else is going to get sanded one more time before... Uh... Yeah. But, uh, maybe. I don't see why not, honestly, man. I mean... So, by the time they see this video, you, it'll probably already be done. Okay. okay. I, I do have a pinhole right here, if you want to zoom in on that. Here. So, we're going to put some spot putty on that. So, you know, we're, we're treating this, even though it's it's a real minor or a small amount of paint, we're treating it, you know, how we would the outside of the car. Because it is the outside of the car. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think anybody's going to go up to it and say, they miss a spot. You got a pinhole? Yeah. I hope not. I hope <laughs> people ain't getting that close to people's cars. <laughs> yeah, just cover it with some pinstripes. Yeah, let me know in the comments uh, if... <laughs> you would walk up to somebody's car and inspect it like that. Well, the thing is, like, uh, if that if you're spraying a metallic, think it'll show. That's gonna show. Paint won't feel that. Paint will not feel that. It won't. I used to think it will. I'm like, oh, no, just slam it on, and then it, you know, no, it won't feel it. So yeah, man, I really want to get this done uh, tomorrow at the latest. Let it sit in the sun. That way, when it comes time to paint the car, I'm going to mask this completely with tape. Like, the whole thing covered in tape. That way, that's why I'm doing it a week before. That way the clear is nice and dry. The tape won't stick too bad. You know, it won't lift, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Because the last thing you want is to 
tape it and, and then you know paint the car and everything you go to peel it off and, and it lifts or or you miss a spot and you got some overspray some, some, some darker green here you know that would ruin the day follow the fade man huh follow the fade a fade yeah, yeah a fade. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear that because of the fan. Merca, Merca dry guide coat. This is a uh, Sunmite 600 grit, and it was Sunmite's uh, 400 grit. I really like the Sunmite for for this step, uh, or you know, even even 80 and 180, man. I always use Sunmite. I always use Sunmite. It's kind of just what I use, man. I do have some of that Dura Gold. Nah. It gums up. Eh, I don't know. I can't, you, you gotta stick to what you know, man. Once you find a process, once you find a process that works, stick to it. Once you find a clear that you can that you like the way sprays, stick to it. You go to you you know switching and doing all this, and, and you really kind of asking for trouble, you know. So with this, it's okay to do it by hand with no block because it's 600 grit, man. You're not really, you're not really uh, shaping anything. You know what I mean? It's not like you're shaping it. You're just smoothing it out. Now, you, you wouldn't want to use, you know, 180 by hand, no block, because that would be shaping it. It would be. If there's any filler or anything like that here, you know, you would be digging into it. So, just by hand. But yeah, you're right on that pinhole, man. I mean, you know, you don't even know where it's at now. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to go find it. But, a little bit of spot putty, 400 dry, and I'll show you that. And, and then it's, it's gonna be a little red dot. And you could probably spray base right over it or seal it. I don't know if I'm gonna seal it. I don't know if I'm gonna seal this. Maybe, maybe. Um, I mean, why, why would you seal it? I mean, if you see some breakthrough or, or? I mean, there's no breakthrough. This is 2K primer, 600 grit. It's, it's ready, it's good. Okay. The only reason I would seal it maybe is to be consistent with the rest of the car. Because when I will seal the car, but the difference is it's a di it's a totally different color so like if you if you spray the the color of the car or or uh yeah let's say that we didn't seal this and we're going to spray the whole thing one color the green and we don't seal this so this is a darker gray and we do seal this which is a lighter gray if you don't get complete coverage this might be a shade different hmm. well being that it's a totally different color anyways yeah no, no, no. It don't really matter. So we peel the tape off because it's all wet. We'll, we'll use new tape. Alright, so we'll bring them back a little bit later. Yep. Alright, we're back. We got everything masked. As you can see. Mix one to one to one, so it's going to dry really fast, and uh, it almost doesn't even need it. But I did have to put a, a little bit of spot putty, boom, for a mi little micro pinhole, a couple here, and just for just being really cautious today. I'm going to use an Iwata orange cap because the paint is not a metallic; it's a solid color. So stick to what we know. 
got it at 16, 15 PSI. Mixed up three ounces. Probably won't even need it, but we'll see. So it's already been uh, wiped down and tacked off. We're ready to go. Bobby's gonna paint it. On the floor. The fan? Yeah. That's okay. first.
trick here just to get it to pour better. So what I say, four ounces. ounces of reducer because it mixes two to one. So you have two ounces of paint, you can have one ounce of reducer. So we have four ounces of paint, which is two ounces of reducer, and that makes six ounces. Which should be plenty. When it mixes two to one you get you it you know you get better coverage. The paint is thicker. It's two part you know some paints mix one to one, it's, it's not as thick. Uh, I think I it. The problem is that, uh, yeah, two to one blendable match. Recommended to, to use it with the uh, with the epoxy. You don't want to strain the epoxy. I strain the I strain it when I pour it, but I don't strain it before I put it in the gun. So when you strain it when you pour it, it gets the chunky stuff out. You don't want it chunky. Sure it's still good. Why are you using the same settings? That's what the gun recommends for optimal performance. <coughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. A little nervous. Is that my mask? You are not. Uh -huh. They both got my name on. Okay. Dropping the gun makes you nervous, Bobby? Yeah. Hey, I'd rather drop that gun with six ounces of paint instead of drop that cord. So we're going to go. Two 
folks, probably, man, honestly. Same as the sealer. I'm going to move a little bit slower, though. Move a little bit slower.
six ounces total. I think that I'm thinking uh, probably three ounces each side, maybe. I don't know. We're gonna see. See how much we have left over. That's the way to gauge. You don't want to mix too much, but you also don't want to mix too little. Then you have to stop.
15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes. We're going to do a second round. We got four ounces left. So we only spent two ounces. So, but I'm only going to do two coats. We don't want to get too greedy with it. I mean, one looks good. One already looks good, you know, but for UV protection, we're going to put another. So that's it. Two coats of color, two coats of clear. No issues to report. We're gonna let this thing dry in here. It's 95 degrees. So give it about an hour. And then probably, it'll probably be dry to the touch. Push it outside. Pretty simple process. I'm glad I was able to get it done today instead of tomorrow morning. Let this thing sit for a week. Like I say, when we come back, I'm um, going to mask tape up the, the stripe entirely with tape so we don't get any, any type of bleed through. Use one gun for the whole job 1.3, sealer base, and clear. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more work.